What's up guys? So I've been having some conversations about the Passport Bro stuff and um, one of my friends who met and married a Dominican woman has been posting stuff on his Facebook because he's now, I guess you can say an influencer. <laughs> uh, so he posts stuff just to get reactions from his followers. And you know, he's posted some stuff from the YouTuber Filipina P. If you guys haven't checked her out, she's a Filipino who often talks about life in the Philippines and how it relates to expats and guys trying to find Filipino women and for the purposes of relationships, stuff like that. And he posts something and her particular video has gone viral on like other platforms besides YouTube. That particular video over overall her her channel does pretty well but this one <laughs> this one uh video of hers a snippet of it rather keeps spreading um virally amongst the different social media platforms uh, particularly amongst the passport bros and so forth and you know i commented on his video saying you know basically what she's saying in that particular snippet i don't agree with everything she says in her videos definitely but in that particular instance, yeah, I agreed and said, you know, this is pretty much all facts. And, you know, guys can follow some other Passport Bros who have YouTube channels um, like Richie Mac, Zoom to Thailand, uh, Austin Holloman, who's a Gen Z guy. So that's pretty cool that, you know, he's only 23 and he's doing his thing already. I wasn't even thinking about it at that age. Like I had already traveled overseas with the military, but I haven't lived that. I wasn't living that that passport bro lifestyle um as well as others bmt travels black experience japan and a bunch of others i think i'll link those in in the in the description below okay That's including filipina p if people want to check out she's really cute um and um she talks on a plethora of stuff so anyway a lot of the women were shaming the guys in the comments, particularly me. And I didn't say anything bad. I just said, hey, what she's saying is facts. And these are some other people you can follow on YouTube if you want to get more information, particularly from the from a black male's point of view of living that passport bro lifestyle. And, you know, some women were saying, oh, you you trying to spread being a, a pimp overseas or some woman was saying at least American women don't shame foreign men coming to their country for for p-u-s-s-y and stuff like that they were just saying nonsense stuff under my under my comment so i i've ignored them and i'm waiting for someone to call me out and say why aren't you responding to them and i'm going to say well hey i don't speak sign language i speak english french a little bit of latin learning a little bit of tagalog <laughs> never never learned sign language shames insults guilt and the need to be right but on the portion that they're talking about guys going over there trying to be pimps and going after low hanging fruit and stuff like that. Now, let's be clear. There are passport pookies and I'm going to do a whole separate video on that. But I want to get after the the thing that they often date when they come overseas and that's bar girls. So for some of you not familiar, if you haven't been overseas when I say bar girls, I'm not talking about girls that you meet at the bar who happen to be drinking or out with friends or doing whatever. No, bar girls are women who actually work in the bar and can be bar fined. A bar fine is literally a fee that you pay to the that you pay to the establishment to take that woman out um, of the bar for that night, and it's different versions of how that can uh, can uh, be accomplished so and th this isn't just in the philippines this is in thailand panama parts of europe and other places i'm going to only speak right now on the philippines just to make it succinct um but this generally can be applied to these other countries where you can find bar girls like in central and south america parts of europe and other parts of Asia, particularly Southeast Asia, okay? 
So no matter what they call themselves as bar girls, they are sex workers. They are literally taking a fee for you can pay for their time for uh, SEX. Okay. Now, some of them may say, well, I'm not a bar girl. I'm a waitress. Or I'm not a bar girl. I'm a dancer. Or I'm not a bar girl. I, I, um, I'm actually a door girl that hands out the flyers and promotions at the door to entice people to come into the, to the establishment. They're all bar girls because all of them can be bar fined. And it's crazy for guys to go literally halfway across the world just to date prostitutes. These are the passport pookies, sex pats, um, rather, that do this stuff. There's a lot of old white men that do this. So the black guys who do this are in the minority. Most of the black guys that do go over there, they might have their fun with the bar girls, but the majority of them are not wifing up these girls or women. And I mean, why would you? Like, let's say on average, they have one customer per day and work maybe like five, six days a week. That's five guys a week that they've had sex with times 52 weeks in a year. And they may work at that bar for up to 10 years. We're talking about thousands of pipe got laid in them. Thousands. And again, I'm I'm being very generous in saying only one customer per day. It can be several. Maybe not within that day, but within that week, it'll probably be several men. So you're talking about within a year itself, it can be thousands of men. Not within years plural <laughs> within a year so and you think that that's a suitable person to spend the rest of your life with but you literally left your country to get away from the tacky women and so forth to date a pro now if you want to do pay for play just to have some fun, cool, do your thing. But to wipe that up, there's something wrong with you. And to get back on to the whole thing of how they operate. So depending on what part of the Philippines, you might encounter, in, encounter different sorts of bar girls. The way it works in Manila and Cebu, from what I understand, <laughs> and the way it works in, say, like Subic Bay, and then the way it works in Angela City are two different things. So how I know it works in Angela City from the people who've done it, I don't, I haven't done it because I haven't even been to Angela City, which is in Papanga. And you notice I pronunciated that two different ways. That's because I'm not sure because I've heard people pronounce it both ways, including the Filipinos themselves. Some say Angeles, say, say, some say Angeles. I don't know. You can just call it AC for short, Angela City. It's the second largest red light district in the world. The largest being Pattaya, Thailand. And the locals call it Pattaya, but most foreigners call it Pat Pattaya. Um, that's where Richie Mack is and from Zoom to Thailand. So to be sure, not everyone is a is a is a pro in Pattaya, but they're not hard to come by. Like you can find pay pay for play literally about everywhere in, in Pattaya. Because it is the largest red light district in the world. And you can have plenty of pay for play fun there if you want. But getting back to the subject. So in Angola City, which is the largest red light district there in the Philippines, typically they do long time. So you you will pay a fine to the bar. And for people who've been there... Tell me if I'm if I'm getting my my locations wrong because I know what the situations are, but I may be getting the locations wrong of who does what in in each location. But from my understanding, Angeles City is the one where you do the long time, 
where you pay a fine, the bar fine, to the bar, and that's it. You don't pay one to the girl, and you keep her overnight, so to speak. Now, in Manila and Cebu, I think it works a little bit differently, where you pay a bar fine to the establishment, and you tip the girl. Now, if I'm confused, if, excuse me, if I'm confusing the Manila and Cebu situation with the Angeles City situation, someone please correct me in the comments. But I think in Manila and Cebu, you pay a bar fine and you pay a tip to the to the bar girl. And Subic Bay is a little bit different. Um, you, they probably also have long time situations as well that you can pay for. Actually, yes, they do. But their main thing is doing the short time in the bar itself where you can, they'll take you to a private room and you can have short time with, with the bar girl. So three different sorts of situations, although I may have gotten the locations mixed up. Okay, so Subic Bay is in the north of the largest island in the Philippines, Luzon, which is the same island where Manila is located. Um, it is off the coast, of course, Subic Bay, but it's where there used to be a U.S. naval base. It shut down, but there was a whole industry, you know, industry that grew up around catering to the to the seamen and marines that came came through that that naval base, and of course, that's where a lot of sex workers and stuff ended up going because you know military guys like to get it in <laughs> same thing with angular city angular city used to be an air force base clark clark's air force base i believe and so again a whole town grew up around that area and the hub of it is walking street it's also walking street and pataya so walking street is the is the hub of Angola City where all the um, activity goes on, <laughs> so to speak. Whereas in Metro Manila, there was actually several red light districts and they were known to be the red light districts of, of the Philippines before the big one in Angola City popped up. Um, there were several, there was one in Ermita, um, there was one in on Makita Street in Makita. Um, and then there was another one in Malate. Malate and Ermita are both um, smaller um, districts within the city of Manila, which is, which is its, in itself within Metro Manila. Cebu is in the central part of the Philippines, in the Visayas. Um, and I'm speaking specifically of Cebu City. So there's a, 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 a big red light district down there as well. I forgot the name of the area, Something Grove. And I think I talked about this in a previous video. So if I can find those, I'll probably, I'll probably connect those to this video. But those are where you will find the three main components of the whole bar girl industry like i said subic bay in the north um within metro manila angola city which is in papanga a province like oh two three hours away from metro manila and then cebu further to the south which is in the middle portion of the philippines and the visayas now mind you there are bars everywhere but those are the big three let those are the big red light district areas in the philippines but you can literally find bars everywhere i don't know if all of them will have bar girls willing to take bar fines but that you'll be able to find women who are willing to do pay for play everywhere within the philippines which is my criticism of these sex pets that would never this has never been to the philippines before but they instantly fly over and come to Angola City, those are the people likely to get fleeced because you should kind of warm your way into the Philippine uh, 
culture and the folks there by going somewhere more Americanized like Metro Manila and then getting your feet wet and going to Angola City and having some fun. Because since there's such a huge sex tourism industry in Angola City, there's also more opportunity to, to be getting taken care of, to, to be ripped off, shall I say. So video is a little bit longer than I expected. But yes, there are passport pookies and sex pads that do go to the Philippines, other parts of Southeast Asia, other parts of Latin America, parts of Europe, um, just to find trashy women. And, you know, they're, yeah, I mean, some hood boogers do travel. <laughs> but that's not the overwhelming um, majority of folks who who travel. So these women who want to make us all out to be these passport pookies, it's not true. I want to do another video on the passport pookie thing itself and some of the guys on YouTube just actually spreading that misinformation. All right, guys, but I'm just a contrarian.